Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, this time, I'm not going to talk about something that you would do inside Vim, rather something that will make your use of Vim more pleasant if you have a multiple monitor setup. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the ability to switch terminal configuration based on the presence or absence of an external monitor. So to give you some context uh, as to why that's important to me, um, I'm currently recording this on a screen, um, a retina screen. Uh, and if I were to plug the machine into a normal non-retina display, things would still look okay with my current settings because effectively the number of pixels is doubled on the retina, but everything ends up being basically the same size. So they just things don't look as good on the external display, but at least they look the right size and it, I, I don't have any trouble reading the screen. Uh, however, if you connect to a 4K display externally, you'll find that you're in this awkward middle ground between the retina density and the normal density. And that means your font is going to get smaller. So what I wanted to do was set things up such that when I plug into a 4K external display, I can dynamically update my terminal configuration to use a larger font size. So let me show you how that's done. And I have to first of all remind myself how it's done because it's been a while. It's been like weeks or maybe like two weeks since I did this. Um, so I'm on a Mac, I'm using iTerm, and uh, it has this great feature called Dynamic Profiles. So let's actually go in there and look at some of these. Uh, iTerm, that's not a dot file, it's just a normal file. Um, basically these are uh, JSON files um, that enable you, enable you to establish a kind of inheritance hierarchy. Uh, so if I look at the, the base here, um, I've effectively got all of the settings that I use uh, in, in iTerm. I removed some of the ones that, that weren't super relevant, um, but these are basically the ones that iTerm will provide. And I'll show you how to actually additionally export these. But if you go to profiles, uh, I think you can copy the profile as JSON. So I think that's what you do to create the dynamic profile from memory. So basically you, you can create this base config and uh, then you can create other configs that reference parent configs. So you can see here, dynamic profile parent name base. What that means is this one here on the left should have all of the settings of the base one, but they should be overridden with whatever settings I have in here. So if you look here in the base one, you see that my default font size, which applies when I've just got the retina display, the internal display is a 13 point font. When I've got the 4K display, I want this configuration to take effect, which is exactly like the other one, except it's three points larger. Um, and so you can see, see in terms of structure here, I've got one for my base terminal use and I've also got one for MUT. Um, I don't want to get off too far into the weeds, but uh, I have an additional uh, config set up for mail to links. So I can show you this actually. Just say I've got a mail to, here's my email address. I've told iTerm to be a handler for this. So you'll notice that when I hold the command key down, it recognizes that's URL. If I click that, it shows an error, <laughs> which is not what was supposed to happen. Oh well, demo gods, I'll fix it later. Um, the basic idea is that it should open a terminal with and just run MUT for me automatically. That's why I have the separate config for that. It usually works. I'll fix it. I will make my config great again. So we'll ignore MUT for now and we'll just stick with these two. Um, so we have the 4K version, which you've already seen, and then we have the Retina version, which is just like the 4K version, except it has 13 point font specified. Now, how do we switch between these? Uh, the nice thing about dynamic configs is that if you make a change on the file system, iTerm will notice. Um, and you can see here that it's already recognized that these are dynamic configs. Any change I make to those files, it's going to get picked up by iTerm. And there's a, the last screencast I recorded, not what I meant to show. Um, so let's have a look at how we use Hammerspoon to actually change the files on the disk. Uh, before I do that, let me show you where I put those files. Um, as I said in a previous screencast, I use Ansible to copy everything onto the file system. Um, so what is it doing here? It is creating this directory. It's making sure that library application support iTerm dynamic profiles exist. That'll get created anyway, the first time you run iTerm, but just in case I hadn't run iTerm, 
before running the Ansible build, I tell Ansible to make sure the directory exists. Of course, to run Ansible, I have to open a terminal. So I probably did have item installed, but you never know. There's always a chicken and, that, chicken and egg aspect to these things. Um, it also creates this sources directory. And the idea is we want to put sim links from the dynamic profiles directory to my dot files repo so that anytime I make a change to my dot files repo, that will get reflected in the base config. Now I don't do this very often. Um, and I think if I were to do that, item wouldn't actually pick up the change because it's looking for changes within the dynamic profiles directory, not for files that are pointed to outside the dynamic profiles directory. So in order to get it to actually pick up what the changes are, we have to create links that we can switch. And so that's what these lines down here do. Uh, first of all, we create links to these supplemental files um, from the sources directory to the same location in my dot files. And then we create these switchable symbolic links. Um, and so I may as well just show you this. Now let's go to library. App. This is not the right place. Library application support item to let's look at what we've got here. Oops. So you can see here, I've got the dynamic profiles that link to my dot files repo. And then I've got the sources that are the kind of override subclasses. What's going to happen is when I want to switch the external display in or out, this link mutt.json and winston.json are going to get rewritten to point to one of the appropriate override files. Because the sim link itself is going to change, the target of the sim link is going to change and not the contents of the target, item will actually pick that up and it will reload. And so this will happen automatically. So let's go back and just confirm that that's what's happening. Um, we create these links. This comment explains why we're being careful here. We basically want to make sure that we don't create a new link or override an existing link because we want Ansible to only do the initial configuration. And once that has happened, we want Hammerspoon to handle the toggling. So let's look at the Hammerspoon config. Um, Hammerspoon is another one that I've talked about in previous screencasts. I'll try to dig up a link to explain a little bit more about it and put that in the show notes. Uh, but basically Hammerspoon, you write these little Lua modules that describe how to do things. And one of the things you can do here is uh, tell it to monitor the file system. So let's have a look at Hammerspoon item. Basically, I'll make this a little bigger so it doesn't wrap. Basically, this thing is going to subscribe to layout changes, and which is what are going to happen every time I plug a monitor in and out. If the screen count is one, we know we're just on the internal display of the laptop. Um, and we're going to just basically shell out to these commands that are going to update the sim links. Uh, and otherwise, we know we've plugged in the 4K monitor and we're going to switch the sim links in the other direction. Uh, so this has been pretty verbal and potentially confusing. So I'm just going to do a demo now so you can see what actually happens. Um, so I'm going to put the font size back the way it was before. I've got a key binding here uh, that I can use to force the layout. Normally this would happen automatically by plugging in monitor, but given that I don't have a monitor here, I'm just going to hit the key binding to switch to a two monitor layout. And you'll see, the font size changed. Well, maybe I, can't, I actually don't know if it did change because <laughs> it happened so fast. Um, let's go back to a one monitor layout. And a two monitor layout. And let's look at those damn sim links. Where were we? We were in like library application support item two, three. So if we look at this, you can see that the Winston.json is currently pointing at the 4K version. And now I'm going to hit the thing for one monitor. And you'll see that it's now pointing at the Retina version. And now I'm going to hit the one for 2K, uh, two monitors. And you'll see that not only did it change the position on the screen where the terminal window is, oops, uh, but it also change the sim link again. Now, I think the reason why it's not actually changing the font size is because I've hit command plus or minus to manually set it. And so 
uh, iTerm is basically ignoring the fact that there's a preference for a different font size. So I'm going to show you that again by opening a new terminal window. I'm going to hit the binding for single monitor layout and you should see that the font gets a bit smaller or it's the right size. There we go. Um, it went smaller. Um, now I'm going to hit the two monitor. You see it got bigger. Hit the smaller. Get smaller. So the demo gods smile on me. Um, so that is uh, using item 2 dynamic profiles and Hammerspoon to drive font and other item configuration changes in response to monitor events. So hope that was useful to you. Uh, I'll provide some links to this in my .files repo because I know that was probably pretty hard to absorb given how uh, clumsily I explained it. Uh, if you find this kind of content useful, check out my, my channel. I've got a bunch of these um, and you can always subscribe so that you find out when I publish new content.